Now I want to talk about designing a winter food plot and not necessarily that we're going to be planting obviously a food plot in the winter here, but the great thing about the winter time we're here at the end of January is it really shows how lean your food plots might be um, for this time of year. Obviously this time of year we have deer hitting some food plots, but it's where there's heavy brassica and corn. And we don't have any beans. Neighbors have beans, they're all gone. We had beans over in uh, Wisconsin this year, they're all gone. So they really didn't make it. We need a high volume where our corn's still standing a little bit. It's still, it's still providing in each one of the corn areas that we have, uh, corn food plots. But corn isn't appropriate for the entire hunting season. We look at really corn to be useful for mid-November and later. And so you need something to set up that early portion of the time. I'm looking at when we get into our food plots like this, we want to see as much volume as we can hold as long as we can during the season. And so that's always a trick. You know, there's things, for example, you get into Southern Michigan, Northern Ohio, where you have big ag regions and it's flat and there's not a lot of deer, even overzealous areas where, you've, where people have shot off too many deer. You can put brass out in, in areas like that. You can have rape and turnip and radish. You get up to 30 inches tall but because of the abundance of food and the lack of deer, uh, usually below carrying capacity, then there's areas where I've seen brassica rot into the spring. So the deer just don't touch it. So that's an example of great high volume that'll stand up to snow and be green all winter long. You have bulbs that, that'll provide, uh, but the deer not liking it. And then I've seen that same brassica planting, same seed in say a Northern Michigan setting or Northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, where it's a high wilderness area same deer numbers, low deer numbers, but because there's not an appreciation of quality food in the area, then the deer hit it a lot harder and it doesn't even make it till October 15th. Doesn't have anything to do with frost, freeze, you know, we're just talking brassica. But the bottom line is, the trick is, is to find what's going to give you the most volume for the longest period of time. And a lot of times that's based on the size of the food plot. We're on a food plot here that we're gonna make changes. This is a quarter acre. And we have our big food plot over here. We have a big food plot straight across the field over here. We have the top of this hollow. We have big food plots around the house, across the hollow over here. So we have areas where we have corn and greens. We actually have brassica, and then we plant our power green blends. Uh, that power green blend is always uh, changing. We change it up again for this year. So we're again, we want it to be as attractive as possible. So I'm looking at a plot like this, it's a quarter acre. <clears throat> it's not going to have corn on it because that corn's not going to last. We find when we have long, thin corn plots adjacent, directly adjacent to woods, critters come in, they destroy the 10 rows, and if you only have eight rows, well, you can see the problem. Even if you had 16 rows and they destroyed the first 10, you just wasted a lot of money, time, and effort, and energy on a plot that didn't really produce much. And so, Again, going back to what do you choose? And what I'm finding is a lot of small plots like this is a quarter acre, it's a strip, gets a little bit of shade over on this side. We started, we cut out some trees last year, Dante and I did. We have an apple tree over here with a cherry tree. We're gonna actually cut the cherry tree out. The rest of this brush stumps, so just an apple tree by itself. It'll be a great scrape tree. You can imagine, it'll be beautiful. It's almost like I, they'll eat the apples. I'm, I'm doing it for that, but that tree right there will just, the scrapes under it will be outstanding. Of course, we'll stick a camera on it. So I'm looking at what would be a good fit here. We've tried brassica. The soil's very poor here because of the runoff from the ag field. We've amended the soil. We've fertilized appropriately. And the brassica seems to really, it's not getting a lot of sunlight in some, some cases if it's on that side versus this side. And it's just not producing that volume we'd like, but we don't want to have brassica alone either. So then we put the green blends in here. Some of those larger seeds. This is a long skinny strip. You have a flock of nine turkeys coming through here and they'll, they'll love those oats and peas and beans that are on top of the soil that you're trying to plant for another blend on the other side, even rye seed. So we run into those problems. And I'm telling you this because I suspect a lot of you out there, you know, the average person doesn't have 15 acres of food plots. They have a few acres of food plots. Dylan, I'll put you on the spot. We go to a lot of clients. I can think of clients off the top of my head that had an acre and a quarter of food plots, acre and a half. Um, what would you say your average uh, client is? I would say you're averaging around three acres. Yeah, I would say that's that's a good average and and I think that's an average because we have people that do have 10, 12 acres of food plots that brings up the average. So if you take out some of those 
bigger food plot plantings that average goes down a little bit and uh and so i'm looking at this you know what can we take into the fall now i don't like creating a big uh, doe herd during the summertime and that's a consideration too so on our big plots i don't like beans unless we fence them in i don't like clover on all our food plots out here because then we're going to put a lot of does and fawns on that clover and we're going to create a uh, condition i call a doe factory where those does and fawns just keep coming back they have more fawns and all of a sudden you explode the, the population the number one way to lower your deer numbers if needed is to get rid of the summer food if you have a lot of it in an abundant abundant amount we have neighbors around here they'll see 35 does and fawns and a handful of bucks we'll see 10 12 doe or bucks and not as many does and fawns in, in some of our sets. So I'd rather be the one that has a little bit more of a balance. And a lot of that balance has to do with what we're not planting during the summer or planting. On a quarter acre plot like this, I'd like to plant clover. We have our clover blend coming out in February. I've extensively planted clover in the bass. That was my first food plot in 95 was a clover field. Planted it extensively and heavily all the way through about 2006, right around there. And because of planting no-till and having to work the ground uh, clover can create a great sod base and when you're using no-till equipment what i found is you have to leave it for four to six weeks after killing it you have to kill it with 24d and roundup you can't just kill with roundup in order to get down to bare soil to throw something no-till like brassica or rye in order for it to grow because otherwise the clover chokes it out shades it out and kills it the brassica or the rye so in this case right here we'll start out with some spring oats that we'll put and mix with our brassica blend if i was putting this in the in the fall then i would put our our clover our perennial and annual blend with our brassica we have a brassica blend that goes along with the clover specifically so that it's not eating up too much space in the soil so that you can actually have a great clover crop going into spring there's some strategy that i learned years ago with that i first started combining clover and brassica back in 99 so a long time ago and we'll bring those blends to you and, and a lot of the strategy that went into those so here, I'm going to go with clover. Clover can tolerate a little bit of shade. It can tolerate some, a decent amount of browse. What you want to do is we don't want a lot of does and fawns here. So if I had a lot of does and fawns on the food plot that's about 200 yards away, all summer long, you can bet that they're in the same movement right here. They'd be hammering this. So a quarter acre is not terrible. So a quarter acre will be that right blend, and we'll do that with another small plot over here. We have about four or five little areas that we'll put clover on this year in between our big plots that have more of that diversity. It's more just for a pass-through and more for a hunting plot. Again, we want to have a thick sod base of clover growing by fall, and we'll be able to do that with poor soil, a little bit of shade, and long skinny plots, seed that's not going to be picked out by the critters, and an easy sweep across the food plot. So we'll bring that to you, but that's what we're looking at this time of the year. We're looking at, is that food plot providing right now? If we have good crops like the corn, the brassica blends, the green blends, then a lot of those, if they're good volume, they're providing still right now. We still have deer hitting those. But when you get to these smaller plots, even if you have the complement of those big ones, you really want to think about how much volume you have and how long you can get to last and still be attractive, of course. You know, we could actually come in here and lay a rye on top of rye on top of rye. And I've done that in the past in the UP of Michigan, but I find it not to be not as attractive down here in the ag land. And so that's why we stopped doing that. When we were coming down, we used to live in the UP of Michigan. We'd travel down to Southwest Wisconsin every year and plant our food plots. We found that rye, oats, peas ended up being a great mix in the 2000s in Wisconsin. And then with a complement of brass off the side. Now I wanna show you guys too, um, not just saying there's not a lot of volume here. We have deer tracks or you know deer trails coming through here. It's nice to see we have deer hitting the big plots, of course, on either side. This is an area we actually find sheds. But I wanted to show you, I wanted to dig down and just kind of show you what we have down here. You can kind of see down here if, if the lighting's okay, but it's just, it's just all soil. Um, everything that, that grew was, was small, and, uh, and that's a problem with that we've had this food plot for three years in a row. 
been planting the same crops on it for three years in a row, kind of beating my head against the wall, and I'm just gonna go back to the basics. Again, I wanna go with volume, and sometimes I'm really stubborn. I want my brassica here, and I want that green blend. I want the brassica to be 18 inches to 24 inches. It's just not gonna happen with the type of soil. But you can see, I mean, that's just it's just all dirt. You know, I'm just digging down. There's no, no green vegetation even coming up. So um, we'll go back to square one on this food plot. Again, it's all about volume. Winter time is a great time to assess that. Great time to assess the, the entire plot in general. You know, we have our really nice family traditions, tripod stand back there. It's awesome stand. We put camo netting around it to cover it up. It's got a roof on it. So we're going to make this food plot a great hunting plot. This is actually where Dylan and I were sitting right over here on a water hole about 80 yards away and Bo came out here. And we've seen him do that a couple, couple times now, two years in a row. So it really makes me want to sit here and uh, get this food plot fired up. And uh, you can bet from creating it in the, in the spring and planting it to hunting it in the fall, we'll bring it to you this season. And I hope that uh, you can take some of the things we're doing here Try to get that volume, try to get something attractive. That's the name of the game. And you really can start with green. I mean, that's your basis of all, that's the, the foundation of all food plots. And if you find that green that gives you the most volume, you're gonna have a great food plot all season long, and that's the name of the game. Hey, I'm really excited to introduce to you our Hills and Thermals web class. It's something we worked on all year. We're trying to put lots of facets of scouting, aerial imagery, diagrams on the whiteboard to really teach you how the wind moves through hills and how you should find bedding areas, how it relates to deer movements in general, how that relates to, this is a bedding area stand, this is a food source afternoon stand. We really tried to put this together and offer you a complete picture of how to navigate hills and find better success consistently where you hunt.